Welcome to Ramta Solutions. Right. Welcome to our lesson on vertical projectile motion. Today we are looking at, of course, we are on the past paper series and we are looking at a question paper from the nation's best performing province in terms of metric results. That is the Free State Province. So this question paper is from September 2022. So, let's get into it. Oh, before then, before we proceed, guys, if you're watching this video on your cell phone, please rotate the screen so you can see the writing at a maximum. Okay. When the, your screen is <clears throat> rotated, you will have maximum viewing. Okay. So, it will be better for you. All right. So, without any waste of time, let's get into it. Let's read the question. The statement rather says, a crane is lifting bricks on a wooden pallet at a constant velocity. When the pallet reaches a height of 17.2 meters above the ground, one of the bricks falls from the pallet. Ignore effects of friction. Okay. The following is the, is the position versus time graph of the motion of the brick until it strikes the ground. Let's look at this position. As we can see, it says here the initial position when the brick fell, it was 17.2 meters above the ground and it moved up a bit to 19.6 meters per second. This is aided by or rather is explained by relative velocity that when it drops, basically it moves upwards a bit. All right, it moves upwards a bit because initially it was moving upwards. Okay. It was moving upwards relative to the crane. Okay. Relative to the crane. Okay. Perfect. So it was another it was zero relative to the crane. Now as it drops, it will be a certain velocity relative to air. Okay. Perfect. So now it says here that to reach maximum height it took the brick 0.7 seconds. And of course we talk time symmetry. It will return to that position 0 0.7 seconds later, which is at 1.4 seconds. Then, this brick falls to the ground from the moment that it was dropped. It falls to the ground after 2.7 seconds. Okay. Perfect. Now, let's answer the questions. Question 1. Explain what is meant by free fall. So, when we talk of free fall, we're basically talking motion in which the only force acting is the gravitational force. Okay. That's it. Motion in which only force acting okay, in which the only force acting is the gravitational force. Is the gravi gravitational Okay, there are many definitions that you use. Some will say it's motion of an object under the influence of gravitational force only. It's still okay. Okay, it is still okay. What remains is that the only force acting is the gravitational force. Okay, perfect. So write down the time taken by the brick to reach its maximum height after falling off the pallet. As you can see, maximum height, which is the turning point of this graph, is after... 0 0.7 seconds. All right, if you can look at it, here is it. It's 0 0.7 seconds. Okay, so this is 0 0.7 seconds. Question 3, it says, calculate the velocity of the brick just before it falls off the pallet. Just before it falls off the pallet. This requires us to find the initial velocity. Okay, so we have already used 0 0.7 seconds and we'll use the information of maximum height. Remember guys, at maximum height at this point here, velocity is 0. So I will use that information. So I will use this formula. Vf squared equals Vi... Oh, before that, let because these are vector calculations, I choose upwards as positive. Okay? These are vector calculations. So please ensure you uh, you highlight this point. So we said 
I said I would choose V and I will use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta Y. Okay, so what is a final velocity at maximum height? The final velocity is zero. Initially, we do not know what the initial velocity is. So acceleration, we chose upwards as positive, so it will be negative eight. Now, what is the distance traveled from point of release to maximum height? I will have to simply put this 19.6 minus 17.2, I guess. So let me uh, respect both mass, even though you're in maths. I guess you don't have to. So, I mean, you're in physical sciences, so you should just get your answer as long as it won't confuse you. So let's just put this on our calculator. 2 into negative 9.8, right? 2 into negative 9.8 times, open bracket, in other words, 19.6 minus 17.2. Okay, so what is our answer? Our answer is simply, uh, this is minus 47.04. Okay, so VI squared equals 47.04. So VI equals the square root of this. What is the square root of the positive number? So answer a negative, um, square root of a negative answer. What is it? I'm getting the square root of 47.04. I'm getting 6.886 meters per second. I will choose positive because it's going up, so I will choose upwards. Remember, with your square, your answers could be plus or minus, but because initial velocity, or initially, the brick was going up, I will say initially, it was 6.86 meters per second upwards. Okay. If you like, I'll, I think I should also do a second method, one way you use this, but it's okay. So let me just show you. Even if you use this one here, method, I don't know if I should say method two or option two. You can use one that says half delta y equals vi delta t plus half a delta t squared. Again, upwards positive, right? Upwards positive. So remember what is happening here. And then the delta y that you are using will be the height of and the building. In other words, it's not the height of the building, but the height of the pallet above the ground, which was 17.2 meters. So in terms of displacement, it will be negative 17.2, right? What is the initial velocity? We do not know. What is the time taken of the object to reach the ground? It was 2.7 plus half negative 9.8 because we chose upwards as positive 2.7 square so negative 17.2 equals 2 points plus let's see 4.9 times 2.7 square what is this this is boy 2.7 vi minus 35.72 Right? So this answer plus 17 or minus 17.2. And do we get? We get that <clears throat> this is this is 18.521 equals VI 2.7 VI, sorry. Equals 2.7 V sub I. Now 18.521 divided by 2.7, what do we get? We get V sub I is basically 6.86 meters per second. As you can see, it's a positive answer. So this means it will be upward. Right? Perfect. Proceeding C. So now the, sec the third question says to us is it the third? Let us see. Okay, it's the fourth. The fourth question says to us, calculate the velocity or calculate the distance covered by the brick during the last second of its motion. Right? 
the distance covered by the brick during the last second of its motion. Let me see during the last second of its motion. Okay. <clears throat> so during the last second of its motion, the motion is 2.7 seconds. Maybe let me try to find... How about this? Let me try to find velocity after 1.7 seconds. Okay? Number four, I'm going to find vel um, velocity after 1.7 seconds. Right? After 1.7 seconds. Remember they said... <clears throat> We must find the distance covered by the brick during the last second. Obviously, the total time is 2.7 seconds. Therefore, I should look at velocity um, after 1.7 seconds. So, let's see. It'll be, I'm going to use the formula. Um, okay, I'm going to say upwards being positive. It's important, guys because these are vector calculations use vf equals vi plus a delta t okay plus a delta t what is initial velocity we said it was 6.86 what is acceleration it will be negative 9.8 what is the time it is 1.7 okay it is 1.7 so let's get it 6.86 minus 9.8 multiplied by 1.7. What do we get? We get negative 9.8. Is that so? 6.86 minus 9.8 times 1.7. Yes, we got negative 9.8. So our velocity is negative 9.8. Okay, it's negative 9.8, which is 9.8 meters per second way down right downwards okay so now <clears throat> we can now calculate the distance so the distance covered during the last second already we have the time during the last second during the last second what does it mean? It means the time is one second. We already have the initial velocity for this period, which is the one we calculated, um, the negative 9.8. All right? So let's see. What do we get? We get, you see, we will say this is delta y. Think one with initial velocity and time will work. vi delta t plus half a delta t squared. Do not forget, upwards is still positive, right? Upwards is still positive. I'm not going to write it because I already mentioned um, in the beginning of this question, right? So I will say, meaning I mentioned it here, so I don't have to continue mentioning. By the way, it is not that to say this is a mark. It's not a mark. It's to guide you in your answers, okay? So we said initial velocity is negative 9.8. What is the time? It's one second. Plus half negative 9.8. What is the time? It's one second again. It's one second again. That's square. Let's see. 1.8 <laughs> minus uh, negative 9.8 minus 4.9. How do we get? We get negative 14.7 right we get negative 14.7 which is like 14.70 meters therefore this means distance covered distance covered in the last second is 14.7 meters okay <clears throat> this means distance covered in the last second is 14 points meters okay distance covered in the last second in the last second is 14.7 yo the last second was drastic eh? but it's okay so this is how we do it guys this is how we do it okay this is how we do it i guess 
this is it. So, let's get to the fifth question. The reason I'm proud of the fifth question is that a playlist of this topic includes the breakdown of the graphs, how to plot them and all that. And one of the graphs that we plotted was this one of acceleration versus time. Remember, your definition of free fall was saying it's motion in which the only force acting is the gravitational force. And with the gravitational force, the acceleration is taken as a constant 9.8. So it's up to you as to how you draw this graph. I will say upwards being positive. So if upwards is positive, what does it imply? It implies that acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So if I draw acceleration versus time, acceleration with the units a meter per second squared and time in seconds. So it will be on zero and then negative 9.8. And that negative 9.8, let me change the color. It's going to be this and here. Okay. It's going to be this line here because no matter what happens, the acceleration is the same. It's always 9.8 meters per second downwards. Okay. So this is how you attempt these questions. So you will realize that this question is worth, let me see, 2, 3, 6, 11, 13. It's worth 11 or 13 marks. So 13 marks, remember, spend 13 minutes. We spend longer because in one of the questions, I showed you a different method or a different option. Okay. But remember to spend at least 13 minutes. And if you say you are too late, spend 15 minutes maybe two minutes extra okay all right so with that being said it's a wrap and bye bye